look, combines next week. Give me the positional needs on the Niners. Like, which positions are the most important for fans and the front office to be zeroing in on in this underwear Olympics? Marco, you go first. You, I feel like you got something to say. Uh, they should definitely go get a head coach, defensive coordinator. Um, not in you all seriousness. I'm so cynical over the last few years. I love in, it. In all seriousness, um, the the main positional need is right tackle. Um, the way the combine, everyone's there, like the draft should fall. Right tackle should be there. Offensive tackle, offensive lineman is deep in this class. I had back in November, I had nine first round draft grades on offensive linemen. It's still that that way for me. Um, so for me, I definitely wow. think offensive tackle um, is the key. Um, or a guard if they feel like a guard's better um, center um, with Jackson Powers there. Um, for me, I definitely think offensive line, you can't go to the Super Bowl, get your ass whooped because your offensive line sucks, and then not expect to draft an offensive lineman. Like, it's pretty bad when that's the key for the last few years. You lose because of your offensive line. Um, so definitely, I think offensive line is high up there. Um, I think edge rusher opposite of Nick Bosa is up there as well. If you can't get home with the front four, that's a big issue. So I think Offensive tackle and edge rusher is my second one. But if I had to give a third one, um, definitely would be probably corner. Um, but I'm not too worried on corner. I think you could replace a nickel and then just move Demo outside and have Amory Thomas not play. Like It's not that hard to not have Amory Thomas play. If you would have had Samuel mm-hmm. Womack I'll in play. the slot, just don't play him. Like It's not that hard. Like So I think that's it's an easier fix than, than everyone truly thinks, to be honest with you. Rohan. I think uh, what Marco said is pretty accurate. You know, you talk about this this class. The Niners, the last few seasons, they've had an excuse in the draft, not going for offensive linemen. You can say it's because they don't like to play them when they're younger. You know, they prefer more veteran options. Or whether it was they had a third-round pick last year, you don't want a third-round tackle starting. Like Marco said, there might be nine to ten offensive linemen in this class that are first rounders that have first round grades. They're not all going to go in the first round, which means talent should be there at thirty one that could potentially start on day one. And so I think I'm not saying you go into it saying I'm going to draft a tackle at thirty one. I think this is the best class for BPA in the Niners' sake. But there's BPA very well could be one of the most premier positions in football at thirty one. Elsewhere, the one other position I want to add uh, to the list, you talk about edge rusher, you can talk about defensive line as a whole, maybe getting some more depth at defensive tackle if you can't bring other guys back. But I, I want to talk about receiver because, I mean, you're hearing Brandon Ayuk trade rumors. I don't know how much I'd buy them. But regardless, in 2025, one year from now, the Niners like to project, you're probably going to have to make a decision. And you might even lose your slot guy in Jawan Jennings. You need insurance there. The guys you've picked up before, haven't been that, you know, haven't been that impressive. I would look to target receivers as well within the first four rounds. I like that. I'm going to throw out some wild cards. You guys hit the, the big ones. I'm, I've been doing a little series for uh, SI.com, all 49ers, just like taking stock of each position. And I'll just go through each player, each position. And at the end, I'm asking myself, is there, are there, is there arrow trending up or down? I did the tight ends this morning. I felt like every single tight end on their team is stocked down. Every single one. Everyone. No offense to, to George Kittle because he's all pro, but I, you can't say he's getting better at this point in his career. And then every single other tight end on the on the team is replaceable. Sorry, Ross Dwelly. But they need a tight end. They've needed a tight end for years. I understand why they drafted Cam Latu, but I don't think he's the one. So they may need to take another stab at that position, kind of like when they took Trey Sermon and then took Ty Davis Price and then that didn't work out either. They should take a good tight end. Um, and then who? Jatavion Sanders out of Texas. That'd be a perfect at 31. Take him there and then go get off in the tackle or whatever you need, positional value. And at 60, what is it, 63 or whatever? I mean, especially if you're talking about like potentially cutting Kyle Juszczyk, which I'm not against. I mean, $7.5 million against the cap to do what at this point? Catch the point, Kyle. Come on. In- it's Kyle Juszczyk. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I just feel like it's a uh, good player. He's 33. They don't use him much anymore. He's too expensive. Yeah, if they cut him, get another tight end. It's another reason to get a tight end. Uh, also, um, quarterback. Not not because of Brock, but because I feel like Brandon Allen, Sam Darnold, deuces. And good luck. But the, uh, Brian Greasy and Steve Slowick have drafted one quarterback. It was Brock Purdy. I don't know if it was just them, but I'd like to see if they what they could do with the second shot. They seem like they know what they're looking for. Curious to see if they draft a quarterback this year. Although everyone's looking for the next Brock Purdy now, right? Didn't 
<laughs> All of a sudden, there, there was, was an article that came out on that. But that you talk about, about quarterback, you talk about tight end. I think those two positions, it's intriguing because in free agency, they're starting to become a little premium in terms of backup quarterbacks, backup tight ends. You're paying six, seven million dollars. Draft might be the place, you know, you can they go get Jake Browning. Hey, man, he's coming back with a vengeance. He's a baller. You're going to say Marco. I said, if you think about it, it's funny because the S2 score for Brock Purdy was elite. Like he was yeah. like everyone. Was like that's why the Niners kind of drafted him because of those scores. And yeah. then CJ Stroud comes out and it's like terrible, but he does great, like which is funny. So um, it's going to be definitely if you're following the metrics, I mean, if you're going to take a quarterback, take someone with upside, man. Like don't go and like, you know what? Let's find a quarterback that we could possibly win. Go get upside. That's what I'm. That's what I'm here for. Upside. Well, with the Niners though, they're not going to be taking a quarterback in the top ten or the first three rounds. It'd be interesting to see if they take another guy at all or sign him after as an undrafted free agent. What trait would he be like? Another Brock Purdy type? Seems like you'd look for that, right? I mean, you started this trend. I don't know. Can he just be able to throw the ball in in the rain? That's the one thing about Brock Purdy that bugs me, man. Like, you can't throw the ball when it's a little bit wet. That's a problem in Northern California, but maybe we can get him some gloves or he can learn to throw with gloves. That's let's not, let's not bash Teddy on Brock Purdy. Huh? He's going to be like Teddy two gloves over there, man. It's just not, not going to happen. Like don't, I, I honestly, if you truly can't grip the ball with, with your bare hands, it means you have too small of hands to play in, in the NFL at quarterback. And that's a big issue. Cause I think it's, if, if you, if you look at the teams that are going to be in the playoffs in the NFC for the long, for the long future, right? Most likely Green Bay is one of those. So you might be on the road going to Green Bay a lot of this, a lot of your time in the NFL if you're Brock Purdy. Can you play in that kind of – Rohan, what's the weather like when during the playoffs out there? You're obviously in Wisconsin. It's freezing cold, right? Oh, like, yeah. You can't grip oh, yeah. the ball there and you can't grip it now. Like It's an issue in my opinion, but I think he played great. I mean, you can't really say like he didn't play good. He really played great. But I think quarterback two is a definitely a big position unless Kyle decides to go with the – Greatest quarterback to ever throw the football for the 49ers and re-sign Sam Darnold. 